this question that was submitted was asking for essentially implementation or an example for how you would implement a big endian to little endian conversion given a 1024 bit system. Uh, and obviously with, with big endian to little endian, all we're doing is reordering the bytes. So presumably the same code also would have worked from little endian to big endian. I'm assuming that 1024 was just kind of a, a random number chosen in that it's considerably larger than the 32 and 64 bit systems we normally talk about. And uh, obviously this system uh, is only a theoretical system. We're not actually talking about writing code for this sort of system. And the first thing I wanted to point out here is that endianness applies to a variable or a field in memory. So you have, you have an endianness for, let's say, a short, or an endianness for an int, or an endianness for a long int. The endianness is always applicable, is always based off of, if you will, how large that data type is, how large that variable is in memory. If you have, and to get to the question at hand, if you have a 1024 bit system, the code that you would need to write to convert from little to big Indian is the exact same code that we wrote to convert big to little on a 32 bit system. Nothing, nothing logically changes. The only difference is, is now we have uh, 128 bytes as opposed to just four or eight bytes that we were trying to reorder. And to say that, say that again, the, the bit size 32, 64, 1024, the bit size of our system is irrelevant when it comes to big and little Indian. You could have a 32 bit system with a 64 bit variable. And that variable, once again, might get swapped back and forth between uh, big Indian and little Indian. So, we talked about a number of different solutions uh, in the instructional session about how we might go about reversing a sequence of bytes. And there's nothing really saying that we can't take the exact same approach here. So let me just kind of reiterate the most naive of the solutions we had before. And I'm gonna create this magical 1024 uint type. And this obviously might have been typed theft to a byte array or, or something else. And it doesn't really matter. We can just assume that there is a 1024 bit type on this hypothetical 1024 bit system. And just like before, the inputs and output of our function is going to be the same type. And in this kind of naive solution, we created a return value that we're going to update as we go through. And then we reinterpreted both the input and the output as a series of bytes, as a byte array. And now that we have a byte array, we can just do the extraction of the particular bytes that we want and place them in the output at the particular bytes or particular offsets that we want. So our for loop, rather than before going from zero to, to well, three or zero to eight, now we're going to go from zero to uh, 128 for a 1024-bit uh, field. And for each iteration of this, of this for loop, we are going to place the output 
in the swapped location from the input. And once we've done that 128 times, we will have finished swapping all of the bytes and can return the result. So other than the fact that we're using 128 bits, oh, sorry, 128 bytes uh, as kind of a magic number for our for loop, this ends up being the exact same implementation. And if we recall from the other approaches we can take to this problem, including using a lookup table uh, or uh, masking and shifting each byte, we can do that same approach with this as well. And the follow-up question was, what if the input was coming from a 32-bit system? And this is where, once again, the, the, the bitness of the system doesn't really matter because the definition of endingness is associated with the object, with the variable, not associated with the, the architecture. So there might be some nuances with regards to implementing this on one system versus another. But if we're on a 1024-bit system, all we need to do is reverse however many bytes that particular variable is supposed to consume in memory. 